Bob from Insidium here, it's Top Tip Tuesday time and on today's video I'm going to show you how we can create this really nice render effect of these kind of micro cell particles. Uh, it uses a couple of cool tricks in Redshift but is much more simple than it looks. So let's begin. In our scene then we have our cached particle cell animation and here are our particles, here's the emitter and we've also got an open VDB mesher, let's just activate that and you'll see that we are meshing those particles, we'll be using that a little bit later, let's switch that off. Uh, let's make a little bit more room now, we don't really need to look at the viewport uh, much and we'll hit play in our redshift render view and you can see that we're not rendering anything, that's because the default light is switched off so there's no light in the scene, let's just switch on this dome light and there are our particles. Now these are rendering because on our emitter we have got two things, we've got a redshift object tag and in the particles tab it's set to sphere instances which gives us our um, uh, uh, our rendered spheres and we have a default standard redshift material which is just a grey shiny material which gives us this okay so let's get started what we want to do is we're going to switch off this light because we want our particles to emit light so we want to get that set up so let's just switch off that material and we'll go to our standard node we can switch off the base color weight, we can switch off the reflections and we want to come down until we get to the emission settings because we want to emit light. Let's put this on say 2, we uh, will be adjusting this a little bit later. But now those spheres are emitting white light, we can clearly see that. So what we want to do is restrict this so they're only emitting light from the outer kind of perimeters. So we're going to use a Fresnel to do that. So let's double click and type in Fresnel. Uh, we want a Fresnel node, there it is, let's drag that in. And if I solo that, you'll see that we're getting these colors. So basically this is dependent on the camera angle. Um, the polygons that are facing the camera will be black and as they get towards perfectly perpendicular to the camera angle, they will be white. And we can make adjustments to how this color black to white falls off a couple of ways. By default, it's set to IOR, so you can change the index of refraction to get different uh, fall offs, or you can just switch off use index of refraction and then just use this curve number to kind of drive the fall off of that. So let's put that on say three for now and just leave it at that. So what we're going to do with this Fresnel is we're going to use these black and white colors to drive the opacity of our instanced spheres. So where it's black they'll be transparent, where it's white they'll be opaque. And to do that we'll just pipe the output of that Fresnel into the geometry opacity and there we go it's working now these particles are being rendered too big we want them to be smaller um, so they're not overlapping and so they're perfectly within our measure and they're not poking through so let's go to our redshift tag on the emitter and set the scale multiplier of those instances to 0.5 Yep, cool. So finally in this uh, material, we want to get the color of the particle from our sim. We don't want this light, light to be white. So let's double click, type in user, and we want a color user data. And in this color user data, we need to get the right attribute name. We can find that in the presets, particles, particle color. There it is. And if I solo that, Yep, we're getting that particle color and we need to feed this into that emission color. So let's go back to our standard node, back down to our emission settings. By default, it's white. We want to put the particle color in here. So to reveal this input in our node, hold control, click on this button and it makes an input here. Look, emission color. Let's drag in our particle color and now we're emitting that particle light. Brilliant. So now what we need to do is get our mesher set up because the magic of the render technique happens through the refraction of our material on the mesher. So let's just open up our material manager, double click, make a new material, put it on our mesher and activate it. Everything's gone black and that's because those particles are inside the volume of the mesh so that light uh, can't get out. So let's go to our mesh standard node. Let me switch off that material manager and let's go up to the top 
and we can switch off the base color we want our reflection let's get let's get the glass sorted first so in the transmission that's our glass let's put the weight on one yeah that's cool and now our reflections we don't want any roughness in our reflections so we're going to switch that off and we want these reflections only to be round kind of the very edges of the curves so we can do that by just putting this index of refraction way down to maybe 1.1 yep so we're just getting a suggestion of those um, reflections cool now here is where the technique comes to life this is the magic setting it's dispersion and by adding dispersion what we're going to do is effectively each co light color will be given a different index of refraction meaning that it will the light colors will separate as they go through this um, volume and that gives us the effect that we want so if we put this dispersion on one we're going to see a little bit of an impact not much let's put it lower the lower this number the more separation there's going to be let's put it on point one yes now we're starting to get that now we can make a couple of adjustments here i would say this is a bit dark so we could go back to our particle material go to our standard node to the emission settings and we could bump this up to say four yeah that's looking nice and if we go to our fresnel we can get different looks by kind of clamping this down so if we make it so it's only the really outer points have that um uh, that light value let's put it on say five we're starting to get thinner um uh, thinner sections which are opaque the thinner you go the more light you need to emit let's put this way up to say seven to get some really fine defined um opacity and then because we've done that let's go back to the standard and pump loads more light into it let's put this on say 10 yeah that's looking cool so that is the basic setup loads of adjustments can be made with the nodes that we've got in but it gives this really nice cell style look using just a couple of materials and some nice redshift tricks